What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Oprah Side Nigga. And I wasn't about to drop this real nigga tales this soon, but a lot of y'all been asking for it. I've been seeing the comments. So I was like, fuck it, I might as well drop it a little bit earlier. I was probably going to drop a real nigga ran in the boy if you don't get before this. But fuck that. It can wait. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Let's get it. Alright, now today, I got a pretty crazy story for y'all. In fact, this is one of my favorite memories as a kid. Now, we gonna have to go all the way back for this one. I'm talking middle school. I'm talking 7th grade, 8th grade, no, 8th grade middle school. We gotta go all the way back for this one. Now, when I was in eighth grade, I was on the basketball team. Like almost all of my friends, almost all of our friends were on the bas. Almost all of my friends were on the basketball team. I mean, our it's not like we had a super big middle school. Our middle school wasn't that good, so I mean, pretty much anybody that wanted to play could play. So we would have practice every day after school, every single day. And that was cool. I didn't mind it. But this is where the story comes into play. So when I go to school, right, when I go to gym class, my gym teachers sell candy out of their office. Now, the gym teacher's office is inside the locker room. So let me try and paint this image for y'all. Y'all walking, you walking into the locker room. And the first door on your left is the gym teacher's office. All the male gym teacher's office. Because it's the boys locker room. So all the male gym teacher's office right here on the left. And you walk farther down and you see the boys locker room. So the gym teachers would sell candy out of their office before and after the end of the period. So it was cool. They would they had all the candy you could imagine and everybody used to buy that shit. And I remember one day when I was at basketball practice late one night when the gym teachers weren't there. Somebody on my somebody on my basketball team, I think it was Jonah. This white dude named Jonah, real good friends with him. He figured out that you could break into the gym teacher's office. Using any credit card, any any type of credit card, any gift card, anything like that. All you had to do was just slide the card through the lock and just push down and that shit would pop right open. Now, when he realized this at first, we didn't take we didn't take anything big. We would just take one or two pieces of candy here and there. It was only me and Jonah that knew at first. So we would just take one or two things here so nobody would notice because we weren't trying to get in any trouble. Then before you know it, about a week later, everybody knew, everybody on the basketball team knew, and a lot of people who weren't that just went to the school knew that you could break into this room and get all this candy and shit for free. I'm not 100% sure how they found out, but everybody found out, right? So one day, when we're at basketball practice, the whole basketball team was like, yeah, everybody knows about the candy now and shit. They're starting to take it. We should just go ahead and clean it all out once and for all. Just get all of it. And there was some, and there was money in there too, like the money that they would make for selling the candy and then the change they'd have to give people for candy and shit. Like there was like, there was, it was probably like a hundred, two hundred dollars in there. I don't know. It wasn't a lot. It wasn't like they had stacks in that bitch, but I mean, they had some money in that shit. 
So one day, somebody decided on the basketball team that we were just going to clear that bitch out. Clear that bitch out. It almost, it's, it's crazy. Because almost all of us on the basketball team, we all had the same gym period for the most part. So, and that gym period is eighth period. There's nine periods in the day. So, we had gym the period before the day was over. So, one day on a Friday, we all, we're all talking about it in basketball practice. And we decide that this Friday, when we go to gym eighth period, we're going to go into the, we're going to break into the office and we're going to steal everything. It's like 10 of us. It's like 10 or 13 of us. Pretty much the whole basketball team. We're going to steal everything. All the candy. All the money. There was even a couple checks made out to the school in there. We were going to steal everything in that bitch. So we all come down. Eighth period with our backpacks empty. Ready to clear this bitch out, right? And we do. We clear that shit the fuck out. We take everything. Candy, money, some nigga was even taking fucking checks made out to the school, like, what the fuck you taking checks for, like, just the typical nigga for you, but yeah, niggas is stealing checks and shit, bro, niggas is stealing everything out of that bitch, so after we clean that bitch out, we go to our ninth period class, and when I'm in my ninth period class, people in my class that I was just a jib with, are starting to get called down to the office. Because I don't think they knew who stole it yet. At this time. This was just the next period. Like there's no way they already knew who stole it. Because there was no camera in there. Because it's the locker room. But they knew that all of that shit had disappeared that period. So they knew it had to be people or somebody in that period who stole everything. So they get to calling down a lot of people for my class. But they don't call me down. I'm scared as fuck thinking they're about to call me down. As soon as the bell rings, me and this other kid named Gerard, we rush out of that school as fast as we possibly could. When I tell y'all I got the fuck out of that bitch because I knew I was about to get called down. So we rush, the, we rush out of that bitch quick. We rush out of that school quick as fuck. And when I get to the door, the exit to leave, right, I see the fucking principal, Mr. Mack, dude, and he's telling me and Jerron, hey, come here, y'all, where you going, not so fast, the day's not over, and I'm like, fuck that nigga, the bell just rang, it's 335, I'm out this bitch, man, I hit it on his ass, me and Jerron hit it on his ass, it was a Friday too, man, we hit it on that nigga, so we come back on Monday, right? This is when shit starts to get a little crazier. So we come back on Monday, right? And as soon as we get to school on Monday, they call us, they call me down to the office. Now, when I get to the office, I see fucking everybody that I stole shit with already in the office in this one big ass room this big ass table they put a couple tables together they had everybody around the table and shit everybody that i stole shit with and that's what i knew at that moment he knew that he had fucked up that's when i knew it was over so i'm like damn so i get in that bitch and mr back he wasn't even asking me what the story was. He already knew what the story was. So he's like, yeah, we found out that y'all stole all of that shit and all of that money and the checks. And he already knew who had stole what. Like, he already knew who had stole the checks, who had stole the money, who had stole the candy. And he made all of us pay, like, a certain amount. I can't remember how much it was. He made all of us pay for the candy and then the niggas who stole money. And cash, they had to pay even more. And he made us pay all of that shit back. Oh, but he wasn't done. He had just got started. He also hit us with like a 15-day suspension. Like the longest suspension I thought was like 10 days. I was wrong as fuck. This nigga hit us with a 15-day suspension. Each one of us. Oh, and he wasn't done, my nigga. He was not done. We couldn't go. This is eighth grade. We couldn't go to the Cubs game. 
There's like an eighth grade picnic we couldn't go to. There's a bunch of eighth grade shit that you do when y'all you might you might, y'all might have did shit when y'all was in eighth grade too. There's a bunch of shit you do when you're in eighth grade. We couldn't go to any of that shit. None of it. I'm like, man, this shit is crazy as fuck. So everybody, all of my friends, we're trying to figure out who the fuck tripped. Who the fuck told all this? Like, yo, who tricked all this? What the fuck? And we end up finding out who it was. It was this kid named Joseph that was on the basketball team. He was one of our power forward centers. He was pretty tall. Even in eighth grade, he was pretty tall. He was probably six feet even in eighth grade. But he was a bitch, though. He was a bitch. Like, even though he was tall, he was a pussy. Everybody knew he was a pussy. So it ain't really surprised nobody that he was the one that snitched on us. So motherfuckers is so mad. We're all at the crib. When we come back to the school, one of my good friends, Justice, he's got a bunch of fucking lashes on his back like he was like he's a fucking slave when he got suspended for that shit he got his ass whooped i'm talking about a lot of the niggas that got suspended was getting their ass whooped for doing that shit and they had to pay that shit back niggas was mad bro like y'all gotta understand y'all gotta understand how mad niggas was like niggas was damn near ready to Kill Joseph ass. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But niggas was mad as fuck. Like, motherfuckers really wanted to whoop Joseph ass for real. Like, everybody did. And at first, he wasn't coming to school even after the suspension. Because he already knew what everybody was all with him. He finally started coming to school. But you couldn't touch him, though. He was with the... He, he told the principal and everything what people were trying to do. You couldn't even touch him in school. So in school, it wasn't an option. Out of school, however, out of school, however, was a perfectly viable option. It was, it was, it was the, it was the high, it was the, it was the best chance we had at whooping his ass because we weren't gonna be. Able, I mean, we could whoop his ass at school, but we were, we were gonna get suspended for another fifteen, and nobody was trying to do that. We wanted to whoop his ass, but we didn't want to get in any more trouble for doing it. So one day, it's me, Justice, this kid named Shaq. His name, his nickname speaks for itself. I mean, Shaq, do I even really need to say what he looks like? I mean, what the fuck? And then this other kid named Chris and my boy Harlan, which I told y'all about, was in that uh that first time smoking video with me. So we go to the we go to the uh we go to the uh fucking Y. We go to the YMCA, right? And when we get to the YMCA. We see this nigga Joseph there playing basketball. But we didn't want to scare him. We didn't want to, we didn't want him to think that we were about to whoop his ass as soon as he got in there. So I told him, I came up with this idea. I'm like, yo, to get him calm, we don't want him to go tell the Y staff or leave early or nothing. Let's just go play over there with him and be cool. And then I'm going to pick a fight with one of you guys. So he doesn't even think. That we're even on that with him at all. It was this great plan I had. So I pick a fight with Shaq. We're playing with Joseph 5 on 5 full court. And in one of the games, I end up picking this fight with Shaq. And we were about to fight. So Joseph is not worried at all. He's like low-key trying to see this fight. He's not even thinking that anybody's on that with him at all. So as soon as we finish playing basketball, we put our shit on and me and Shaq are talking like we about to go fight outside. And this shit is believable as fuck. Like y'all got to understand, Joseph is not super dumb. If he knew we was faking, he, he wouldn't have believed it, but he was believing that shit. So we ended up all walking outside and as soon as Joseph hit the steps, as soon as Joseph got outside the Y, I'm talking about the moment the YMCA door closed behind this nigga. This nigga, Justice, instantly cracked his ass. I'm leaked his ass just one time, though. I'm like, damn, he was not wasting no time. That nigga, I'm telling you, Justice had these scratches on his back. Like, he was probably the most mad. He was mad as fuck. 
He was like, bro, you a bitch. You should have never tricked on us. I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Nah, he said, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to run. And this nigga Joseph was looking at it. He was like, yo, bro, what you want? Calm down, calm down. Justice like nine. And he like, bro, chill, chill. Eight. Bro, I wouldn't even know seven. And then by the time this nigga get to like six or five, he's just stopped trying to plead his case. And this nigga just this nigga Joseph just took the fuck off. And he just started running because he knew he was about to get his ass whooped. Dude, this man Justice was probably the best player on the basketball team at the time. If it wasn't me, shit, I say it was Justice. Justice was definitely the fastest nigga on the basketball team. That's why he wasn't worried about giving him 10 seconds. Let this nigga Joseph run for five seconds. Dude, this man Justice caught him so damn fast like y'all wouldn't believe. Got to hitting his ass again. Hitting his ass again. Kept on hitting him. And then Shaq hit him a couple times. Chris hit him a t- couple times. And there was this party later tonight, right? It was this 8th grade graduation party. And we're telling him, like, we better not see you with this fucking party, Joseph. Don't come to this party. It's going to be even worse for your ass. Because we ain't even, because we were still outside. Like, we couldn't, we weren't about to, you feel me, knock him out outside. I mean, there's people around and shit. So we just hit him, we hit him, we hit him, and then we told him that, and we and we got out the jam. Tell me why, this is when the shit gets real crazy. Tell me why this nigga Joseph is going to have the audacity to show up to this motherfucking eighth grade graduation party that same night. We told this nigga not to come. We told him not to come. And he still is gonna come to this party and shit. Thinking that it's gonna be sweet. Like nobody's on there with him. Dude, he get inside the party. Mind you, everybody that was on the basketball team that wasn't at the Y with me was at this party. Everybody was at this party. You feel me? They were ready to get on that with Joseph. People were telling Joseph, like, bro, you better not walk out that door, bro. You better not walk out that door. As soon as you walk out the door to the party, it's a wrap for your ass. It's a wrap for your ass. You might as well just leave now. And Joseph, and he was just, he he wouldn't leave. Like, he was trying to play that tough guy act. But at the same time, he was on some pussy shit. When I mean he was playing the tough guy act, I don't mean he was talking back saying y'all not gonna do shit. I mean he was playing that like he don't like he doesn't like he really doesn't have to leave right now. Like he's not about to get his ass flooded by thirteen niggas. Like he he about to be like bro, this shit is real, bro. So this man Joseph just stayed in the party, right? So he stayed in the party. The party finally ends, right? Everybody on the basketball team and some motherfuckers who wasn't on the basketball team that still wanted a piece of Joseph was all lined outside just waiting on him. Just waiting on him. Just just waiting on a nigga to step out that shit. I'm telling y'all, just standing there waiting. You feel me? Just about to flood his ass as soon as he comes out that bitch. That's when Joseph knew that shit was real. He got scared as fuck and wouldn't come out the door. Wouldn't come out. You couldn't pay Joseph to come out the door. If if there was a million dollars behind the crowd of people, Joseph still wouldn't have came out the door. Real shit. He wasn't le- he wasn't coming out for shit. Cause he knew he knew it was about to get ugly. It was about to get real ugly for him. So he wouldn't come out the door. So what did he what did he end up doing? What do y'all think he ended up doing? I mean shit. There's really only one or two things he could have did. Honestly. I mean, shit, he could have just never left and stayed in that bitch. Or he was going to call his mom. He called his fucking mom. <laughs> this nigga called his fucking mom. Called his mom. Like, mom, they about to whoop my ass. Mind you. He doesn't live that far away from this party. He lives about three minutes away from this party. He doesn't live far at all. He literally is like two streets behind this party. What the fuck? And this nigga still called his mom. Like, mom, come pick me up. And his mom didn't come. His dad ended up coming. Oh, and I also forgot to tell y'all. This nigga Joseph is African as fuck. His last name is Akpala. Joseph Akpa, this nigga African as fuck. 
he doesn't sound African. He's been in the United States for a while. You feel me? So he doesn't sound African, but his parents sound African as fuck. You feel me? Sort of like KSI. Like he don't sound African like that, but his parents sound African as fuck. So like that. So this man, Joseph's dad, come up here. African as hell, right? This nigga come up here in no shirt. With some motherfucking sandals on and some boxers. That's all this nigga came up here with. With, with some motherfucking boxers on. It's late as fucking night. By the time this party ends, this nigga dad go come pick him up in some fucking boxers, man. This nigga pulled up in front of the party. His dad pulled up in front of the party. Got out the car in some boxers. Went inside and got Joseph. And they walked out that bitch. And as soon as they walked out that bitch, they got their ass. Nah, I'm just playing. They didn't get their ass flooded. Nobody touched him, man. He was with his dad, bro. That was some bitch ass shit. I wish I could sit here and tell y'all that we beat his ass and we beat his dad ass. But that's not realistic. That's not what happened. This nigga Joseph called his dad. His dad came to some fucking boxes. <laughs> came and picked him up. And they drove off. And that's how Joseph has got out that situation. Now, mind you, Joseph caught a lot of ass whoopings after that day. But none of the ass whoopings he caught were, were, were nearly as bad as how bad that one was going to be. Like, that ass whooping was going to be crazy. Like, 13 people just lying. It was going to be crazy. That's why he had no option but to call his parents. But yeah, that was a crazy ass story that happened to me in middle school. Man, I got some more middle school stories, man. I got some more cop stories. I got some more everything. I got more bitches stories. I got it. I got stories for days. My next rant probably won't come until about 5,000 subscribers, which will probably be about 17 days, give or take from now. But... Um, I will be dropping a real nigga rant and a boy if you don't get before 5k. That's why it's not going to be coming till 5k. I'm not going to drop another one. Like I've already dropped like two or three since my last rant or boy if you don't get. So I want to definitely try to stay consistent with all of them if I can. But yeah, that's another crazy story for y'all. Like I told y'all, I got crazy stories for days. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribed, damn, I'm high as fuck. I can't even speak. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, man. Yo, this next story is going to be crazy. I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all. Fuck it. This next story is going to be telling y'all the whole story about my week in jail. I'm not going to spend. I'm not going to spare a single detail. I'm going to tell y'all everything. There's no other place that y'all going to find somebody telling y'all exactly what jail's like because there's a lot of misconceptions of jail that you might get if you just pay attention to the news or shows like prison break or any jail there's a lot of misconceptions about what jail is really like so i want to go ahead and give that to y'all my next real nigga tales it's gonna be crazy but as always it's your boy oprah side nigga i'm about to go play this fifa man i'm trying to get good at this fifa before i start posting videos at it i mean i'm not trash but i'm not as good as i'd like to be but now i'm just rambling my ass off Ooh, i can't even speak i'm out this bitch man before i fuck up again peace yeah, this song is dedicated to every daughter that told me I never amount to nothing. To all the people who put me down and made fun of me when I was just trying to go after something that I really wanted. And everybody with the dream, you know what I'm saying? Ha, it's all good, baby, baby. Uh, it was... <laughs> Boy, if you...